Lots of photographers find Affinity Photo's freehand selection tool frustrating to use. So in this video, I'm going to share some of its secrets that allow you to master it. Let's say that we want to select only the cross in this image using the freehand selection tool. You'll find the tool over in the Tools palette on the left of the screen. It's part of the same group as the Marquee Selection tools, so it's possible that one of these could be shown instead. To show all the tools in the group, click the bottom right corner of the icon. You'll then be able to choose the Freehand Selection tool from this group. After choosing the tool, you'll find several options and controls appear in the Context Sensitive Toolbar. The first of these is the Type, which we'll look at in a moment. Next, we have the Mode, where we can choose to create a new selection, as well as Add to, Subtract from, and intersect with existing selections. After that, there's a Feather option, which allows us to feather the edge of the selection we draw. We'll keep this set to zero because the cross has a hard edge to it. Finally, there's an anti-alias option, which softens the edge of the selection very slightly. I like to keep the anti-aliasing option turned on because it makes for a more natural looking cutout. This isn't the case with all images, but with this one, we probably do need to use it. Now back to the type section where we want to start with the first of these, which is the freehand selection. To use this, click on a point in the image where you want to begin to draw your selection. This adds a small node or point, and then whilst continuing to hold down the mouse button, you can draw freehand along the edge of the cross. It's only when I release my mouse button that Affinity Photo draws a straight line back to my starting point. This completes the selection and we then see the marching ants appear. There are though a couple of problems with this. The first is that it's very difficult to draw accurately along a straight edge and curve using this type of tool. It's also difficult to draw around the entire cross without releasing the mouse button. The way to fix this second problem is by changing the mode setting. Because I've got the mode set to new, if I click to add a new selection of the cross, it replaces the existing one. To avoid this, I need to select the add mode in the toolbar. This then allows me to draw around the next section of the cross to add it to the first selection. These four mode buttons are extremely useful in making and cleaning up selections as you'll see later. Let's now create a new selection, but this time changing the type to polygonal. The polygonal type allows us to add a starting point as we did before. Then, as I move the mouse pointer, it draws a straight line between that point and the mouse pointer. When I then click, it adds the next point in the selection. I can continue to add points like this along the edge of the cross until I come back to the starting point. Then when I click on that, it completes the selection and we see the marching ants appear. The polygonal tool is excellent for creating straight edge selections and a lot of this cross has straight edges. There are however some curved edges which the polygonal tool won't be able to select accurately. We'll also probably struggle using the freehand selection tool for this, as it's going to be difficult to draw an accurate curve. This is where the third option comes in, which is the magnetic type. To show you how this works, I'm going to use it to add to the selection I just made. I'll therefore click the add mode in the toolbar. I can now click once at the point where I want to start. Then as I move my mouse pointer along the edge of the cross, you'll see the software detects the edge and adds new points. It's only when I get back to the starting point and click on that, that I can complete the selection. Sometimes when you're using the magnetic tool, Affinity Photo adds points that you don't want it to. When this happens, just press the delete key to remove the unwanted point. But there's another great feature to make creating selections with this tool easier. If I hold down my shift key whilst I'm using the magnetic tool, it temporarily changes the tool into a polygonal selection. Let's clear the current selection now and magnify the head of the cross because I want to show you why this is so important. I'll start by clicking once with the magnetic tool at the starting point. Then, because the first section of the cross is a straight line, I can hold down my shift key to invoke the polygonal tool. I can then move directly to the end of the section and click to add a point. Then, the next point is another straight line, so I can continue to hold down my shift key and click to add the next point. After that, there's a curve section, so I can release the shift key and draw carefully along the edge of the cross. Now the magnetic selection is doing all the work for me. 
Once I've passed the curve selection, there's another straight edge, so I hold down my shift key again. Let's magnify the image now to examine the detail more closely. If there are any obvious problems, we can now fix them using the Add and Subtract modes with the different freehand selection tools. Another option that can work well for cleaning up selections like this is to use the Refine button. But because this is so powerful, I do cover it in a separate video. I'll include a link to that in the YouTube description below. Now, I'll just finish selecting the cross. Then, if I duplicate my layer using the selection and turn off the background, you can see the cross is a neat cutout. Now, as powerful as the freehand selection tool is once you understand its features, it may not be the best tool for selecting a cross like this. An alternative and extremely powerful method is to use the pen tool to create a selection. If you want to know how to do that, watch this video next. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to see you soon in the next video.